I was just thinking exactly the same thing. What an amazing game, you know, and how much footy's um, probably changed in some ways over the years. But some elements of what hasn't changed. Uh, where the, I thought the Broncos played a great wet weather game uh, with their possession and, uh, and kicking in particular and the chase on that kick and their general enthusiasm was you know, from start to finish. They were very good at those items that have always counted on wet weather days, but you don't usually get a 40 to 22 scoreline on, on wet days. It just shows how skillful and you know, how, um, how if you adapt your game well, how many points you can score even on wet days. And they did that, certainly did that better than us. There are a few amazing other things that happened there today too, so I'll leave you to discuss those. Can you comment on that incident though where Maranta was allowed to get up? I would include it amongst the amazing things, probably right at the top of the list of the amazing things that happened today. Have you ever seen anything? Bewildering. Have you ever seen that before? Oh, yeah, I think in the, they've actually legislated for that now, haven't they, where guys, uh, they've made an amendment to that rule interpretation where the guys, like in the end if there was if there was no knock on I'm trying to do what the ref did to you Braith, which yeah. was he tried to come up with a <laughs> reason I was lost. If he, if he ruled that and, that and that's, you know, whatever it's a tough game, I understand all that but if in the end, if he ruled that we knocked it on or they knocked it back and then he ruled that they were in possession of the ball, then at that point you had to call tackled and six again or play on or whatever and Broncos play the ball. Never mind that the other referee is calling at that point in time that it's a rooster's ball. If we just leave them, if we remove that, it, that's a tackle. You know, that, the guy is stationary with the ball. I think it was number two, wasn't it? Uh, was stationary and our number three is in the, in the tackle and that thing was all stationary. So... Um, you know, critical initially, I was critical of our guys who were standing above that. I think I can't remember which two, but you know, you should really should play the whistle there so you could say, well, they should have made the tackle on that guy when he but, but if they make the tackle on him and they thinking that the tackle's complete, then they get penalised for diving on a bloke who's already been tackled. Uh, that, and that's how some of our guys are playing at the moment. I think that we're just we can't get the rhythm of what the referees are about. And you know that one was a a classic example. I believe the ref said to Braith that I, I didn't actually hear it with my own ears, but it was reported to me that uh, uh, I think it was uh, referee check and is that how I say his name um, said that the ball wasn't on the ground, so therefore. That wasn't a tackle. There's a thousand tackles made, you know, every weekend where the ball never touches the ground. It's whether he was stationary and whether he was held that, that mattered. But that's, you know, I'm sure there's a great deal more we could talk about that particular incident. But in terms of overall, yes, it turned the game around a bit. And we, we did that to ourselves way more often than the referees did it to us today. We got ourselves either in front or back into the game and then committed a, an error or gave away a, a silly penalty that let the pressure off and then it all came back onto us again. Brian, you were talking about that heart attack there. What do you think of that, that decision? Oh, it was very bizarre. Yeah, I didn't understand it. Um, yeah, my players were saying that they said Rooster's ball and so I said to the referee, my player said it was Roos's ball and he denied it and said no, I said Broncos ball, so I just said okay. There's not much you can say anymore. But And then um, I said okay, so if it was Broncos ball, then it was held because the play had stopped and they were both holding the ball. And then they said no. I don't know. I'm, I'm sick of talking about it, eh? It's just sort of happened a lot this year, but I wouldn't say it's cost us the game because, you know, I think we probably cost ourselves the game tonight, but um, it doesn't help and it's frustrating and I don't know how to approach it anymore. I don't know how to talk to the ref. I just, because you try and be too nice and then you don't get anywhere. So <laughs> you sort of then, if you go over the top and you get criticised from the media when it's, 
you know, it's just sort of been happening week in, week out. For, I don't know if it's just been us, but it's I, I feel more so than any other year. It's affected our games and our performances immensely. Just a general standard of refereeing you're talking about? Yeah, you know, just in just bad calls, you know. It's just I don't I can't justify what happened in that in that particular it's situation. Three video referees dropped after games involving the Roosters this year, and I think one or two referees or touch judges. And I smell another one or two at the moment. What about the Wallace uh, try? It looked like a double movement. I would have said so too. But anyway. You actually have the lucky side of one as well, Brian, weren't you? I, mean, you I couldn't believe that. Knocked on cold. <laughs> yeah. So, Brian, Brian, how can you, like, how can you address it? Like, if you're, if you're saying, Zion's getting that, is it confidence in the tough calls? What can you do to, to, do you, do you, consult with Bill about it, or what do you? Yeah, yeah, you can, we can talk about that till the cows come out. Yeah, they're the big things. They're the, like the big things, and when they point scoring plays. They definitely determine the, the course of the scoreboard. So you know, you've got to say they affect the game to some extent. But there's a there's a thousand other things that are happening in the game, happening in the game. Like Marty Kennedy beat, a, beat two guys cold today and got himself around and on his front with another guy trying to his best to hold on to him. And we got we had a three second play the ball because. That's the ref's guide, apparently now, is if you play the ball in three seconds, well, you don't deserve a penalty. The difference is that would have been a half a second play the ball. He did so well, and he got no reward for it. And we're feeling, you know, I've talked to Billy quite a bit and Stuart a bit as well about it. And they've come up with that as a formula, which we don't think we're getting the... the uh, the rubber, the green off you, with the decisions to go our way on, on that. We've got a big, strong forward pack, and we've got guys breaking tackles and half breaking tackles, and we can't get quick play the balls because of that that adjudication system that, that they're telling me that is the vogue at the moment. Right, the way you spoke before, mate, you just sound like you're lost. Sort of yeah, I, I just, I don't know. Almost stuck the white flag up. Yeah, in terms of the referees, I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, when things aren't going your way, they're not going your way, I suppose, but um, we'd like them to... We're, doing, we're working hard to make sure that we're doing... to comply with what the referees want out of us week in and week out, but we don't feel like we're getting the, the, the results of that. We're not, we're not, you know, we're getting no justification out of working hard to make sure they're happy. That's all. And I mean, it's just frustrating for us, you know. It's frustrating as a captain because I'm the one that has to try and represent my players and get the best out of... Uh, what they're trying to say to me towards the referees, but we're not getting anything back. Brian, do you feel like the season's slipping away a little bit? You're six points outside the eight, and you've got some pretty tough games yeah. coming oh, up. Oh, yeah, I feel like that. We're, we've probably got to win seven games, and from where we are now, maybe eight. So, plenty of time left, if we're good enough. Towards the end of the game, we heard a commotion someone yelling at you, yelling abuse and that sort of stuff. Can you, did you come out of the box and talk to the bloke? Or? No, but I heard the, the abuse, but that goes with the territory. Now. Brilliant. Yes. I never heard one like that before. That oh, way you heard it better than me. It wasn't. I don't think there was anything uh, offensive. It was, it was just what coaches commonly get when their teams aren't winning. <laughs> Brian, you've, um, you've, you've reacted pretty calmly to what happened with the referee today and to your credit you've said that it didn't ultimately cost you the game. But I mean, they just had a review of the refs. might have been a different level of review. Do um, you think that there needs to be a wider review or do you think there's no point? No, I've said enough today about refs, I think. Um, you know, I'm not, I couldn't give a toss, quite honestly, at the moment about the, the refs and the game. I, I shouldn't probably be saying that because I've got another position that's... Right now, my, all I care about is is what's happening with me, uh, around me, the things that are in my control, and that's how, the, that affect, how it's affecting the roosters. And we we feel like we've had a, a real tough shake with it. And you know, there's some evidence that we've produced along the way that says that we have had a rough shake. But you know, by the end of the season, some of those things might come back our way, and we'll be saying, well, we don't know how it happened, but 
here we are. We've got some lucky calls and 